sometimes all five problems in a problem set are very hard. So you might as well start at the place where nobody else is thinking to start. And then when you get that answer, when you get that answer, start saying, hmm, man, I solved number five. I just wish I could figure out number three. And then people are gonna be salivating. I mean, salivating to just, oh, well, do you help me with number five and I can help you with number three? Boom, two questions solved. Before the end of the week, you'll have all five answers. I may or may have not gotten my degree off of sympathy and payola. I may or may have not gone into certain professors' offices and got a little watery eye written on the back of exams um, that I am a failure and I need their empathy and that I will learn from this, grow from this. Like Tyra Banks says, learn, learn from this. Learn something from this. bring up college I get a little sickly I get a little apathetic that's how bad of an experience it was traumatized but like Maya Angelou said still still I run no Maya Angelou dis disrespect will be tolerated now I know many of you are doing school virtually unfortunately uh, but the principles I'm gonna share with you today should still translate into your online learning. I'm just gonna cut to the chase in the first part of the video and in the second part, I'm gonna tell you how to avoid this altogether. Number one, your professor. Your professor is the gatekeeper between a fail and a pass, a pass and a fail. So it is up to you. Again, I'm talking about you are failing the class. What I'm about to say. It is up to you to lay it on them. Not like that. A little nasty. <laughs> nasty. Not like that, but just like, you know, tell them how apologetic you are, how much you respect them as a professor, how much you respect their class, and ultimately how much you've grown as a person from this experience of failing and that you're learning something from them. I've been, I've had the inkling, the temptation to want to lie, you know, oh, I had a sickly grandmother who fell off of the, the top of this tower and it ruined my life. Like don't, just just avoid it. Just tell them your truth because I promise you y'all, these professors, they've been around for like way longer than you. They can smell the BS from a mile away. And you know, since everything is virtual now, I would say avoid doing an email. That's just, that's just plain. Again, if you feel most comfortable doing an email, send an email, but I promise you like, if you go the extra mile to say like, hey professor, can we set up a video chat? Like can we set up a video call? Um, just a one-on-one. -on -one you and me both pantless in our private homes, you know, that will go a long way. Okay, number two, let's talk about office hours. <sighs> office hours always gave me anxiety because you have the TAs that love the fact that they're like the teacher's favorite. At some point they were, and they're like baby experts and they sniff the professor's anus 24, 7, 364, 65 days of the year every year i'm like i know this check can't be that big this is not all tas but it is most and then you have in office hours that i can't wait to be a ta buttholes who they they're pretty much experts in the class already they've done the assignment they're really just there to flex like they came through to make you look stupid <laughs> And I know it's like, all right, you're just being insecure. Nobody would do that. No, I'm telling you, I've seen this in person. It hasn't been done to me because people know not to play. I know it has been done to me, actually. You know, there's people who will slide through office hours just for fun. It's like, you don't, you do understand that most of us are here because the assignment is due tomorrow and we've done none of it. So can you excuse yourself? Like the... Oh, I just came in to make sure I did it perfect. Go. Don't you have places to go, people to see, things to do? Go to sleep, go to sleep, do something. But that's my note on the anxiety that is kind of in the office hour space. And what I wanna say to you is don't let that anxiety stop you from going. I know that I used to get so anxious about office hours, but you just gotta go. Like you really need to go to office hours. There's so much in office hours that you can get that you might not get in a classroom setting. And then, you know, 
sure, you might be the dumbest person in the room, but you won't be the dumbest person who's failing. And don't leave there without any answers. Do not leave office hours without any answers. Lastly, for your last ditch efforts, okay, assignment. But if you are anything like how I was, I had a life to live those four years. I had things to do, movies to watch, clubs to leave, friends to gossip with, you know, important stuff. You're a growing adult. You know, society puts so much weight on growing children, but like what, they're growing to be a child? Somebody who doesn't contribute? Like, why do we care about them so much? We are growing adults. We're growing into the people that are supposed to like lead this whole society. And that's a, that's a lot. It's a big transition, I'd say. And yes, I guess one could argue that being a non-failing student is a part of growing up. But failing is the biggest lesson you'll learn in college. So if you're failing in college, then you're doing college right. But anyways, you're busy, you have four classes, you have four different assignments. This is what you do. Now, I'm not suggesting cheating. I'm simply suggesting communal learning, collaboration, working together, okay? This is this is the society that we're trying to drive towards anyways, right? You need to do what I call a trade-up. The basis of this is to make completing assignments a lot easier. So what you're gonna do, and you actually end up learning quite a bit from doing it. It just makes the whole thing easier, okay? You're going to start at the bottom or near the bottom because the idea is that all the tryhards and the people who really work hard are going to start from the top like a logical person. And what you're going to do is you're going to get some type of capital. You're not clearly not excelling in this class necessarily. So you need to have some type of way to contribute to a group study or to contribute to other people who are doing well in the class. So I'd say work very hard to get the last answer. Now, one could argue that if you were able to solve the last answer, you could probably solve the beginning questions, but that's not necessarily true. Sometimes all five problems in a problem set are very hard. So you might as well start at the place where nobody else is thinking to start. And then when you get that answer, when you get that answer, you start doing a little networking. Okay, you start saying, hmm, man, I solved number five. I just wish I could figure out number three. And then people are gonna be salivating. I mean, salivating to just, oh, well, could you help me with number five and I can help you with number three? Boom, two questions solved. Before the end of the week, you'll have all five answers. And again, the smarter you get with this, listen, you'll start figuring out your trading partners. You'll figure out a, a whole group You'll have a group. And before you know it, y'all is splitting up the homework, figuring out answers, and then helping each other. I'm not saying cheating. I'm saying helping each other. Okay. So now you have all of my tips for in the event that you're in a dire situation and you just need to hit a C, okay? You just need to pass. But now I wanna tell y'all how to just avoid the situation altogether. Now, whether I have applied anything that I'm about to tell you is neither here nor there. It's not your business. So number one, prepare for class. Just prepare for class. Um, it's going to make you engage with the material when you're sitting in that boring lecture with that horrible professor. It's still going to help you stay engaged with what's going on because you're low key like, I think I understand this. But if you're anything like me, you get discouraged when you don't understand things and then you just don't want to be there. And it's already boring. So prepare for class. Secondly, go to class. That speaks for itself. I mean, again, too, if you're ever, you know, if you're ever in the situation where you need your professor to look out for you, to pass you, it's gonna be a lot easier for them to do that if you've been going to class. Number three, start assignments as soon as you can because professors, they're very conniving and they're manipulative. No, I'm fine, they, but they are, they're always thinking of ways to differentiate students. What they'll do is they'll teach answers to the homework throughout the week after it's been assigned. So you, but you won't know that unless if you skim the homework ahead of time, just give it a glance, understand what's on there. And you might leave lecture knowing some of the answers to the homework assignments. Fourth, 
go to office hours. I know I just talk down on TAs and the kids that are in office hours, but I'm telling you, you have to go to office hours. A lot of times you'll learn things in there that you can't learn in lecture. Um, and again, those kids who are in office hours who are annoying, they're just doing what they're supposed to be doing, okay? They're doing what you're not doing. Also, don't hate on those kids. Those kids could be the key to you understanding the class. A lot of times, if those very smart kids who are in office hours showing off might be down to help you. Tell them to show off in front of you. Fifth, prepare for midterms. Prepare for midterms like your life depends on it. Let me be more inclusive. I'm talking about essays, projects, finals. Prepare, like anything that you do in advance will accumulate and it's gonna be far more beneficial than cramming the night before. I promise you, even if you looked at something only 20 minutes a day for two weeks prior to the exam, it's gonna be 10 times more valuable than you trying to pull an all-nighter the night before the exam because over half of that you're not gonna retain anyways. So make a study schedule, give yourself seven days, a week worth of time to process the information and honestly leave the day before your exam as a day to just kind of like settle in with the information to just be like at peace with what you know lastly stay motivated okay um that motivation is going to look different for everybody my motivation in college was the fact that my mama is paying a lot of money for me to graduate from here in four years Find your motivation is what I'm really trying to get at. If your motivation is to get hired, to get a job, you know, to graduate college with a job, then you need to not even watch this video. You need to watch how to get a good GPA. I'm not the person you give advice on that. I graduated college with a 2.7, but I also did not try in college. So, and I'm not trying to say that to sound cool. Like, oh, if I would have tried, you know, I could have been smart. Like not trying is not smart. So that doesn't make me sound smarter that I didn't try. You know, I think it does make me wonder about like, you know, if I would have tried, if I would have been smarter and I would have worked harder, where could I have been, you know? So it, it, it's definitely something that you don't want to do to yourself. Um, you know, that first part of the video is like, if you're trying, if you're trying to just, you're already failing, time is, it is what it is. I'm just trying to not, like, get, I'm trying to leave this class with a passing C. The second half of this video is so that you can leave the class with a B or an A. And also I had a really good friend group. So don't surround yourself with other failures. All of my friends were very successful in college, are very successful now in their own way. It's not smart to be a failure and to surround yourself with other failures. You need to have people who are just looking at you like sis. They were always constantly telling me like, you know, they weren't like mean, but they were kind of mean, but it was kind of like in an encouraging way. Like you need to live up to your full potential. It's kind of stupid that you're not trying. And you know, I'm very thankful that I have friends who at least didn't encourage me or like, oh God, it's not that big of a deal. It's not that serious, continue failing. Like I never had that experience. So. Again, at, at the very least, yeah, surround yourself with successful people. It'll rub off, trust me. That's all I have for y'all today. I really do hope that y'all have a great semester with everything going on in the world. I know it's, it feels like everything's falling apart, but at the end of the day, you're there in college, in your room, on Zoom, whatever, to get the degree so you can get a job, so you can feed yourself. And listen, if you fail a class or two or three or four or five or whatever, keep going well no just keep going but learn from that try to just learn from learn from each failure see how you can improve see what you can do better and move forward change up do something completely different because whatever you're doing is clearly not working for you and that's not that's not to be disrespectful it's just that it's whatever is in your life whether it's circumstance how you work how you do things how you approach a class you need to work at your best to at least get like 60 to 70 to 80 percent of that out of your life if you fail school you flunk out of college it's not the end of the world it's really not there's so many ways to make money there's still that because that's the, at the end of the day that's why you're there right so that you can find a job that you like or find a job that will pay for your lifestyle or whatever that may be pay for you to eat and sleep and you can do that 
by working at Walmart, becoming a manager, and then they send you to Walmart school or whatever. You know, so it, it, there's so many ways to just keep going, even if you fail all of college. People out here making money off of YouTube, online advertisements. Like there's so many ways to make a lot of money. Anyways, thank you fans, fans, and fans for tuning in.